Hello. So today I thought we'd do a quick little teardown of this alarm module that came out of a, a Honda car of some sort. I think it was like an Accord or something. Really not much of a backstory to this one or anything, so we're just gonna go ahead and tear right into it. I expect to see like a microcontroller, you know, maybe like some voltage regulation, some open collector outputs for driving like relays, and really not that much. This thing is actually not very heavy. You can see we've got a few options here for uh, like outputs like siren or horn. We've also got auto locked set or auto or manual. I'm not sure what that does. I guess it has something to do with uh, if you want it to automatically lock the car at a certain point after you've unlocked it or something like that. Here's an antenna. That would be for the wireless remote. There's a sensitivity adjustment here. So I'm guessing that's going to be for like a shock sensor. And some of these like alarm units have it built in. Like for say example, this is an aftermarket one, a Viper, and this has the, the shock sensor built into the unit itself. And some use an external shock sensor, such as this one, for example. Pretty sure this is gonna have it built in. One thing that I'm really curious to see, what's this uh, GB sensor over here? Cause it's, it's got like holes, almost like it's some sort of a, like a sound sensor or something like that. But I can't for the life of me think of what GB would mean. Good burger sensor? So I guess we'll, we'll find out once we, we open it up. And so there's like four screws in the back, which should just easily come up and it feels like they're threaded into plastic. So little self-tapping ones there. And there we go, that's all four. So this should just come right up. There it is. All right, so what do we have? Well, there's this little can right here. So this is the, like the RF front end and everything. That would, would be like receiving the commands from the remote. You can see the antenna runs right into there. That's a microphone. I'm wondering if it's maybe like listening for like sounds of glass shattering or something. That's that's pretty interesting. I did not expect to see a microphone there. Oh, GB, maybe glass break sensor? That would kind of make some sense. Anyways, down here, look at this. You can see there's some little wispy white, oh, and I can smell it. Oh yeah. Somebody let the genie out. That diode right there is completely burnt up and I'm wondering if that's like the reverse protection diode. So I guess at some point somebody must have hooked up a battery backwards, like maybe the car was getting jumped or something. And so that diode just uh, completely went up and you can tell that it's that it's burnt up and everything. I'll, I'll get you a closer in there to look at it. So I was wondering what's, <laughs> what the deal was with this thing, why it was even pulled out, but I guess that makes sense. It's been burnt. You can see the remains of the ghost right there. So, all right. So it looks like we've got some logic stuff going on in here. That would be the mi main microcontroller right there. You can see we've got a little crystal here. Switch, no switch, and we've got a bunch of little transistors. So a lot of these would be pretty much used for for driving stuff right here on the on the output like relays and and other things actuators. That's what that's doing there. So this should just pull off the board just like that. And on the bottom, <laughs> yeah, you can see where that's uh, the pins on that thing are completely burnt through. So yeah, that's uh, taking quite a bit of damage. Oh, conveniently enough. All the pins are labeled, so you can tell exactly what goes to what on the board here. Like, say, it's right here it says horn, remote LED, ignition key switch. So, I actually did not expect that to be labeled like that. That's uh, kind of handy, actually. We'll help us get a good look at that. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit closer here, and we'll look, look around on the board. So, beginning from here, check that out. You can see that that diode even has a, has a crack right there on the body. Yeah, you see it right there. So that got really hot at some point. And then right here we've got what looks like, what is that? Hmm, let's bend it up. It says D something or other there. So I don't know, is that a diode? That would be interesting diode if it is. Got another diode right there. These could also be for uh, like diode protection, although the fact that this one's burnt, I don't know. Yeah, look, all these are are labeled D right there, so I guess they're like a little dip disc package or something, so that's interesting. 
Got a bunch of little transistors over here. Here's the switch for the horn or the alarm. More transistors. That right there is a MC14584. That's our main microcontroller. That's actually an Alpine part. So apparently this was made by Alpine. Can't see the number on that exactly. Looks like it's 85175W08. There's a little, a little crystal. Looks like there's another resonator right here. Maybe like a 4.19 megahertz crystal. So another little device right there. Maybe like a power on reset or something. Or a regulator. And there, that's the microphone I was talking about. So, yeah, it even says right here. Mic 201. So yeah, it looks like that's what that's doing. This is uh, detecting if if a glass breaks to set the alarm off. What I don't see in here is a shock sensor of any sort. See, here's the adjustment, but that looks like it's just for going to be for that. BU 4069 right here. You got a. This is probably going to be a maybe a knob amp or a or something like that right here. Here's the, the little RF module. See, it's really not that dense in there. It only has a few pins going in and out, like one, two, three, and four. So one of those, one of those is probably going to be for power. One's going to be like the you know data output. And here's the antenna input right there. And then obviously ground. Here's the bottom side. You can see right there where this, these pins are like super burnt. And here is where we can see what each pin does. So see, we have a valet here that probably goes to like a valet switch. This is probably going to be for like a hood switch for detecting if the hood's been opened or not. Trunk, probably a trunk release. Um, remote LED. How are these wired? Oh, okay, so I think these right here correspond to these pins on this side. Yeah, there's something else right there. I don't know what that says. Door switch, ignition one. This one's no connection ground. <laughs> Light flash. Light flash, perhaps? Flash. <laughs> Lock, unlock. These are probably going to be like drivers for relays or something to, you know, activate the, the actuators on the door. Unlock door, side minus. Here's battery input. Uh, what do these go to? Hmm. Dome light? Could it have been something to do with the dome light, perhaps? I don't know. That's interesting. Horn. Starter cut. So this starter cut right here would be for disabling the starter. So if this is activated, it turns on that relay. The relay prevents the starter from operating. So that's how you get your starter disabled. Here's a... Here's a hair. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> All right, let's move that off. Trunk release, siren plus, here's battery set. So, a bunch of other little surface mount stuff right here. We get, see we got some resistors for, for these transistors. This board has like a really dark blue conformal coating on it, so it looks really dark, or darker than it, than it would otherwise, because otherwise it would look pretty light green like that. You can see we got some fairly beefy traces going on around here. So in between these diodes, siren looks like it goes to one of these diodes right there. So yeah, didn't expect to see a whole ton of stuff in here. Here's the microphone. See that one end here looks like it goes straight to what's that ground of some sort? What's like? Yeah, that's a negative pin right there on an electrolytic capacitor, so that's the positive. So it looks like it's going straight to the negative, but then looks like those two are possibly tied together. It looks like it's one of those three-pin microphones. That goes to the rest of this right here. Looks like that's going to be a little capacitor. Okay, so that diode that burned up right here, I thought it was like the reverse protection diode, but it's not. It's actually going to the door right here. So it looks like maybe something happened with one of the door actuators, and that's how it, or door switch or something, and that's uh, that's what happened there. So, yeah, it fried. 
since I'm not really planning on doing much with this, I'm just going to snip these out here. Looks like I just should be able to snip these four pins and maybe it will release most of this. Alright, so here's the RF can removed and this is what we have. Kind of pulled this can away here just to make it easier to remove here. You see where I kind of pulled the pads off the, the board there, but not like I needed to save this like I said. So this should just pop out somehow. Okay, something seems to, oh, there's a, yeah, there's a, looks like there's another pin right there on the can holding it. There it goes. Okay, so that's what we got. We see we've got some like little tuned inductors right there. You can see where they've kind of split them apart. This one here looks a little bit tighter. It's like maybe some sort of oscillator right there. And these are probably going to be the little tuning coils or something like that or like maybe kind of like IF transformers see here's our four pins going out to the main board a few other inductors in the bottom looks like we've got mostly just a bunch of little tiny uh, signal transistors and just a bunch of cap uh, caps like just passive stuff resistors so looks like yeah this is basically just getting the signal from the from the remote and outputting data as you can see right here out this actually goes right to that pin right there on the opposite side this little there's a little via here has a trace that goes to that pin so yep that's all that's doing basically just a little radio picking up listening for signal from the controller and uh, yeah that's about it so I'm really surprised that there wasn't actually a shock sensor in here and it doesn't appear that this thing actually has an input for one so, yeah, looks like the only thing this really does is just uh, check the switches at the doors to make sure that nobody has uh, tried to break in the car and that nobody has uh, broken the any of the glass uh, windows or anything like that. So, yeah, that's it.